Hello listeners, and welcome back to Tales from the Dark Dragon's Inn. This is the second episode in our ongoing D&D podcast. We play together online every week, and what you're listening to now is the streamlined result of that. All of the drama, comedy, and action, with as little of the fuss as possible. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to drop us a message on Twitter at Dark Dragons Inn. We'd love to hear from you. Now let me introduce our players. Tonight we welcome back our guest player, Tom, reprising his role as the Doomsinger. Tall, slim, and mysterious, this grump of a character is also your orator. Hello, I'm Vinny. I play Murren, the half-orc monk. He has a slender build, dark green skin, blue eyes, and coarse dark hair tied into a ponytail. He dresses simply in a loose shirt, breeches, and sandals, which he wears underneath a traditional monk's rope, tied at the waist with rope. He also wears a bracelet patterned with scales, which was given to him by his master Cree. It bears the symbol of Bahamut. As a monk of the Order of the Stoneclaw, he has set out to learn more of the wider world, also seeks an old acquaintance, one who he hopes has answers about the events surrounding the tragic fate of his best friend. I'm Liz, and I play Toby, a warlock of the Raven Queen. Toby is a tiefling, six foot tall and of slender build. His eyes are purple, and he wears his purple black hair short. His skin is a pale grey, and he has horns which curve backwards and to the sides before tapering off into fine points. He wears a turtleneck vest on top, both in different shades of purple. has a long, thin tail ending in a tuft of hair. Often perched on his head is his spirit raven, Oz. Toby is currently hunting for a cure for his sister, Isla who he left in the care of a friend. Hi, I'm Nina, and I play Mix, the Asimar Warlock of the Fae. Mix is 5 foot 10, with one gold eye, the other a deep red, and she has little horn nubs on her forehead, showing subtle traits of her mixed lineage. Her hair is long, purple-tinted silver, and she wears an oversized burgundy cloak. Mix was raised in the woods by her grandmother, the next assassin, and is currently on a journey to learn the truth of her family. I'm Tom, and I'm playing the delightfully oblivious Urbach Voss, Lizard Man Wizard. Urbach's basically your average man-shaped lizard, about 5'10", with green scales, yellow underbelly, and a head not unlike a velociraptor. As well as a rucksack and travelling clothes, he wears a traditional, though tattered, doctor's coat. Urbach is an ex-slave who worked with the sawbones and the waist before hiding in a pile of post-revolt corpses to make his escape. He now travels the world, peddling his medicinal skills, whilst looking to sate his scientific curiosities about life, death, and everything in between. And I'm Ray, your host and game master, and I play, well, just about everyone else. So come on in and make yourself comfortable. Please, take a seat. The show is about to start. And so the journey of our intrepid heroes continues. I am the Doomsinger, your auditor for the evening. Travels, danger, and mystery. What awaits them in the not-so-peaceful town of Greenest? Could there truly be a dragon in the midst? What could these raiders possibly want? Tonight, much will be revealed. So, you now have a rough idea of what your party looks like, and quite what this woman woman is seeing as she turns away from the bodies of the kobold around her, as she looks around at her home and her city, which is variously burning. She looks back at the gnome gentleman who is carrying a small dwarf girl and is tailed by two gnomish children also a little boy and a girl and she looks around at all of you and says we must get to the keep will you go with us yes well there's little else to Let do us. around here yes absolutely we must Makes get sense. everyone to safety so you see her pull out of her bag a small vial of something which she takes a small sip of and then she rushes over to her children and she makes sure that each of them takes a small sip as well. She gives the remaining to her husband and they all look a little bit rejuvenated after that. She turns to you all and says, oh, the keeper's this way. I, 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 do you know the town? No, we just arrived today. That, that's fine. Um, just keep them safe and I'll, I'll lead the way. I need every single person here to roll a d8 please let's find out what happened so um do you guys need to do anything before she starts leading the way or toby's ready to just go yeah good to go 
Toby, Oz has essentially this entire time just been curled up on your horns. Uh, he's looking a little bit more relaxed, but you see him kind of looking around cautiously, constantly keeping an eye out. You can, if you wish, send him to scout ahead once more. However, as the dwarven woman is going to be leading the way. No, I'm going to keep no, Oz with me. So as you guys are wandering through the town, at this point at in this time, point, she's quite hurried. Quite hurried. Obviously, Obviously, you're tailing, tailing. or rather, uh, you're, you're currently guarding a group of basically young children and uh, their father, and their father who are unarmed and essentially defenseless. Lenan, who doesn't take the time to introduce herself, is taking the lead. How are you guys, guys traveling around with these girls? Definitely just charging forwards, close to the potential, potential action potential. as possible. Which way is she headed? She's headed. Then no, I guess I'll stay at the back. Okay. I will be here. Just in case right. anything. Right. Yeah, sure. Just over here. Guys, start on the outskirts of town. You make your way a few hundred feet down the road, pass through a very derelict very street. Derelict. There aren't many people around where you are currently, and the few fires that you fires do see aren't particularly aren't large. Particular. As I mentioned <laughs> previously, there is, there is a lot of a small lot of fires small. where you can see they've set fire set to fire things to in the hopes that that would catch, but a lot of the buildings are made of stone or mud and clay which just aren't taking to the the flames in any way so it doesn't seem like there's a lot of property damage being until the dwarven woman with you is very concerned um and she's just looking around frantically the entire time she leads you towards a corner she huddles up against the side of one building and with one hand she indicates back to you to wait as she seems to hear something directly ahead of you. So Scrawl is on the lead. Next. Go ahead and yeah. roll a perception check to see what you can see. Nothing. You're trying to get an idea of what she's warning you about, about. but after a short period of time, she ushers you forwards and rushes around the corner, and the rest of you follow on. You pass a tavern, the door of which is very heavily barricaded from the outside. The windows are all shuttered. You see that basically wh wherever you go right now, most of what you're seeing is closed off. You can see there are signs that signs. people have left in a hurry. Uh, As you're rushing along, you're sort of seeing dropped belongings, you're seeing small bits of clothing here and there. Mostly, it's just chaos. There's stuff strewn around as people have been knocking things over, and you can see quite a lot of the buildings have their front doors open. A lot of the buildings that you pass, there's very clearly signs that there are people inside, but that they are ransacking the place. I don't know if you guys want to inspect that, or if you just want to keep following this woman and helping her to protect her. Because I'm at the back, can I just spin my head around make sure no one's following us you are keeping a careful eye out as you're watching no one's particularly paying any direct attention to you it seems that lenan's leading you through a lot of areas, areas that are that... either not currently occupied by the invading forces or have already been cleared through occasionally, occasionally you'll see you'll... you know uh, a, a kobold running from one building to the next or you'll see a cloaked figure running from one building to another, carried in large, large amounts of amounts. things, usually in a bag, but they don't okay. seem to pay you much attention. Either they're not noticing you, as you sort of see them quite frequently as you're just leaving a street, or they're just so occupied by what they're doing that you aren't catching much attention. Uh, have we seen any sign of my noble army of caravan guards? No, they headed in a completely different direction to you. So you guys came in. So you guys headed you guys towards headed the southwest entrance of the town, and when you guys when left you guys... the caravan, caravan, the men that you men summoned, that you summoned uh, and encouraged to encouraged join the to fight control. split off during the couple of miles that it took to get to town, and they went into an, uh, another entrance into the city to try and cover more ground and hopefully help more people. So you have not seen them yet, but, I mean, it's a big city. It's not a small town. It's not a little village. Oh, it's not a city. It is a large town, so there is a lot of to be covered. And the fact that they split off is probably a good thing. So you guys are making a fairly slow pace at the moment. Obviously, the gentleman, gentleman. who is with you is carrying a small dwarven child. You notice that he's walking with a limp as he's taken um, a, a, some kind of injury to his leg as he leg. was fleeing with his children. His little gnomish children are also sort of hugging onto him as he walks. He's doing his best to hurry them along, but he's, he's struggling to keep a, a decent pace. Can I go as over and... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Offer to uh, take his child. I mean, you're quite large. Quite this large. is a very small child. So yes, I can say you can carry one of them without it uh, without your speed. Just so we can maintain her. You help 
uh, the snowman gentleman. I need you to roll a persuasion check, Maren. Persuasion. Uh, okay. Persuasion, just as this is a, a test of your charm. Yeah. Um, maybe it should be maybe animal should be handling because children um wow. okay I'll, I'll take it i'll take it <laughs> you offer to take the child off him and he kind of looks doubtful for a second and he sort of agrees to you know that's fine so you you helpfully take her away and then as you bring her up into your arms so you know put her in a secure position she suddenly comes face to face with your face <laughs> and you see for a moment her lip quivers and she's <laughs> What do you do to reassure her? Please don't worry. This this way will move faster. And she's just like, <laughs> okay. And she does her best to put on a brave face, brave and face. you give her this big goofy ass grin, and she's like, <laughs> she's like, okay, grabs one of your ears, and she pulls on it a little bit, okay. uh, and then she sticks her <laughs> thumb in her mouth, and mm. she's like, okay, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. You guys continue further down the road, quickening your pace slightly as you come to what appears to be a market square. This area is bustling with activity. There are various, various groups coming and going in lots of different directions, and they are all either what they appear to be doing is piling up loot into a cart that is in the center of this marketplace. And you see that a lot of the invaders that are in the town are basically coming from different directions and sort of congregating on this market square. It is here that you are noticed because Lanan Le uh, sort of comes into this area, doesn't know a way around, <laughs> tries to sort of sneak you through one side. And as you Fine. sort of sidle along the side of a building, a group exits as you approach the door. And they catch sight of you immediately. We've stopped moving, right? We've been um, yeah, you've been noticed, and it's going to go into initiative unless people can think of a way out of this. However, it is a rather large group. We'll throw the children at them and make our escape. Good idea. Good idea. I might personally have some issues with that plan. <laughs> a lot of spiky things. We still got food um, Mix was directly behind Scraw, who was behind Yanan, who was leading the way, and then uh, Obi, and then there was the Doomsinger, who was in back. Marin, you would have been a bit more up front yeah. now, because you would have been carrying one of the children. So there are three commoners on foot. foot. One of them is being carried by Marin. So yeah, uh, as, so you yeah guys, as you guys round the corner of this corner. building, a large party of the invaders rushes out of the building uh, and immediately and catches sight of you. One of the humanoids, which appears to be wearing, wearing a, a very reptilian-like reptilian. mask, points at the kobolds and points at you guys, and he shouts something shouts in something Draconic. In. How many of you do understand Draconic? Or rather, how many of you don't understand Draconic? I think it's probably simpler. Check. Well, you're a lizard I mouse, you definitely. And I believe Murren does. Mm -hmm. I know Toby does. And I believe Mix does. I do. So in that case, uh, Doomsinger, you hear... Uh, it just sounds like garbled nonsense to you. Oh, well. And what he shouts what he shout For the glory of Tiamat! Oh! Take them! And unless anybody can think of a way to address the situation, time to roll initiative. I'm really wishing I studied dragons more. I'm going to roll initiative. No idea what's happening, so I'm rolling initiative. There was a... a, a uh, someone uh, just uh, pointed at you to, and shouted something in a language you did not understand, and all of the kobolds immediately looked hostile towards you. To be honest, I'm used to that. He, he paid you a compliment. Yeah, well, all apart from the lizard face, we've been quite nifty off the start here. I'm cold bloody, give me a break. It probably won't last. Some of you may be wondering whether or not this combat is balanced. The answer is, I don't know. Let's not die, people. Let's let's keep it together. An excellent oh, and of course, keep our body parts to together combat. and still attached. So, you, you've just, just heard what the uh, tall humanoid-like creature shouted. What do you do? Can I address it? What language do you wish to speak? Draconic. So, looking at this guy rather, like, sternly and um, ask him, what does Tiamat have to do with this village? He doesn't respond to you anyway. Well, I never. 
What do you do? Oh, I hate being first. Okay, well, the kobold's going to go first, then. Okay, that's fine. He heard you say, say hear that, and he is not best pleased about you speaking her name. Self. Self. And so he is just going to rush, rush over, stab you up. Fuck. That hits. So, yeah, I suspect it might. Woe be tied those who commit to indecision. Five points of damage, damage as he whips out a dagger, dagger and stabs Dang. you in the leg with it. I'm I'm not gonna laugh. You are squishy you are now. Squishy. I am so squishy. Will be the days of no longer being a cleric. Now it is your turn. What would you like to do? I'm gonna I'm gonna murder that thing. It's the one just in front of me, right? I am going I am... to am I close enough so I can use a dagger. Yeah, ram it through his throat. You stab him right now, right and that's actually enough for this guy. He's a pretty small kobold and you stab him and you mm. sh- you drive the dagger drive through, the dagger his, ear, through his ear, and he the lights the lights go out. Lights go out. Drops to the floor. Doom singer. Doom singer. I shall saunter merrily along, as I seem to have a habit of doing so. I shall point my finger at the kobold straight down the line from me, uh-huh. and I'll go fire in the disco, fire in the taco bell, and shoot a fire. Everybody blinks for a blinks. moment and thinks, "What the fuck is a taco?" <laughs> Does that kind of bell? Well, the, the Taco Bell was one of the uh, famous temples that I have frequented over time. Famed for its large bell, made by the Smith Taco. I, I will shoot a a moat of fire at his fizzog. Yes, yes. That oh, and that's a detail. But just barely. Yep. Go ahead. Pew. pew. You sort of saunter over, and you and you look at the kobold. You look back over. You, see, you look at everybody with one a glance. You turn around, look at the kobold, and you just sort of flick your wrist. After you sing this little ditty, and uh, a, firebolt uh, a firebolt successfully bolt. launches from your hands for I think the for first think time, so. and incinerate this thing. Right. It just <laughs> uh, it doesn't even uh, have a time to screech or react. Or react. It, it simply it's... burns. Uh, Marn. Okay, first I'd put the kid down. Do I still have a, an action bonus action? Yeah, that's yeah. a free action. You can you can, you cool. can drop the child. You can drop the child as a free action, or you can place the child. For, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I chuck it behind me. No, yeah. I'll just you chop it, it down it's gently. It's turn and gently pass the dwarven girl to her father. Yep, okay. And then I'm going to move into the fray. That's 25 feet. And then I'm going to have a go at this little scaly cool. thing. Mace on its foot. 15 to hit. You rush over and bringing your mace down, smash the kobold with one kobold. fell swoop. Knock it to the ground, dead as a dead squashed as... nail, as per hammering into dirtness. Just shout back in draconic. Who are you shouting? Who are you shouting? To the um, humanoid that um, issued yeah, yeah. the command. Yeah, I shout in draconic. Bahamut is the one true god. And he sneers. In fact, ah. they all do. And what? Soon as you say this, in fact, all four of the people wearing masks draw dual masks. scimitars. And they turn and focus in entirely on you. Toby. Which one of the humanoids spoke earlier? It would have been the one in the middle here. Toby's not going to say anything. He's actually gone quieter than he usually is. And he's going to Eldritch Blast that motherfucker. (laughs) You silently, silently, your your eyes eyes darken, darken. and you feel the the energy energy bestowed upon you by the Raven Queen flowing through you as you manage to channel it into the crystal in your hand and you focus, focus it and concentrate it. the wave of force passes over the head of Lenan cleanly into the face of uh, the cultist and, and his mask is actually mask not away uh, and he is revealed and... to be a half elf and he snarls, snarls and says <coughs> again in draconic you will pay for that one wormling Toby says nothing Toby's in response uh, he's just angry <laughs> and I'm happy again and um, having seen having what the seen... singer did to his, his friend who friend was standing, standing directly in front, front of him, um, he is he going to pull out his pull out sling, sling and he is going to try and attack the Doom Singer. <laughs> that is three points of damage. He loses a pebble and it hits you just above the eyebrow. And you think for a moment, had it been just a little bit lower, you may have landed. But um, instead, simply leaves a, a, a. How does it hit you below the eyebrow? It doesn't. Is the answer. I think it hits your mask hard enough, your mask hits you in the face. Oh, my mask face. <laughs> and that just um, feels really uncomfortable because it's like, 
your face suddenly slaps itself <laughs> into the mask that you wear pretty much all the time. <laughs> so, as I said, Marin, you have drawn the ire of the cultists, and this one rushes forward, and he yeah, is going that. to to take a slash at you. Yeah, so he, he runs over and takes a swing at you, and you sort of nimbly uh, dart to one side and parry the blade away. With The kids are actually pretty comfortable where they are. The father's kind of just pushing them behind him, and he's like trying to, trying to comfort the dwarf who he's holding. He's like, it's okay, it's okay. Everything's fine. These, these nice people will make the bad ones go away. Everything's fine. Um, and uh, it is now this guy's turn. He rushes up. The cultist uh, completely uh. disregards dwarf dwarven woman with a spear ready to stab him up and focuses entirely his efforts on you. So Scraw is fairly annoyed that he's being ignored and uh, he stays exactly where he is in fact and just whips his uh, glaive around as hard as he can to try and attack the one to your right. Scraw gets really annoyed that these cultists are paying attention entirely to Murren whips his glaive around and cleaves straight into the back of the cultist's skull. He falls to the ground, his mask falls away, and you see this guy is a half-elf. Arbuck! Where's the one with the messed up face that Toby shot? He's one straight in front of uh, Lena. He's uh, this one over here. So yeah, directly in line with Marin. Okay, well, let's see if I can fix that face of his. I um, will I just highlight to you that there are currently people coming and going all over this these guys are not really interested in what you're doing. They're not paying much attention right now because this is happening extremely quickly. But, but there are there are a lot of different cultists and, and uh, kobolds variously spotted around this marketplace, rushing to and from buildings. And this guy remember the chilling push. And you were targeting the one that shouted in Draconic, right? Uh, yeah. You uh, manifest the skeleton hand, and he backs away in horror as it comes towards him and it passes straight through his face and as he do as so he you do see so. his head kind of loll back and he falls into the cart directly behind him dead uh, nice just calmly whispered to myself that i never like to talk of toby just curses under his breath in um infernal <laughs> he wanted that one <laughs> lanan uh, tries to tries stab to the stab. cultist in front of her that has been targeting Murren, but she fails to make contact as he deflects her sp- broken spear away with a uh, scimitar. This, this cultist now sides up, up, standing, standing over the corpse of, of his friend, attacks you, Marin. That'll hit. Two points of damage, uh, as he Oof. rolled especially poorly. Six. What's he doing? That's a good question. So yeah. these guys are flanking Marin, flanking and they're Marin. just slinging, like, um, scimitar after Across another. And it, you know those old rail carts, where it's like, pump, 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 and you have someone on either side to kind of keep the momentum going. They're attacking in that kind of room, op- op- like oppositionally, to try and keep him baffled so that you can keep attacking him and keep him off balance and distracted. And every and now and again, every- they're almost in a religious fury, and they're just and they're repeatedly just- shouting, Glory to Tiamat! Glory to Tiamat! <sighs> okay, I am going to... Tiamat above all things! Oh my you God. shall kneel! I'm going to... Can, let me just make sure I'm in range. I have a pamphlet! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am going to move here. And so I'm exactly 10 feet away from both of them. Yep. And I yep. am going to cast the cantrip Poison Spray. Send your hand toward a creature you can see within range, which is 10 feet, and project a puff of noxious gas from your palm. The creature must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d12 poison damage. Both okay. a creature. Which one are you talking about? The one to the right. Uh, basically the one that is directly in front of me if there wasn't... The no. yeah. yeah, so he just goes and choking. The r- sort of brush over. Brush Stick over. your arm out. Arm out. Over, over, over Lanant's head. She kind of look as your arm extends and you sort of curl your twisted claws. Uh, and release a wave of gas into his face. He breathes deep and goes goes down down coughing and choking uh, until his body falls limp. Do the singer. Do the singer. I am going to turn to see the approaching toe-boldy bits. I fall back slightly away, reeling, clutching my mask. Then I shall reach out my hand and just shout, I've had enough of singing, just burn you bastard. Again, throw a fireball at the kobold. You're like, I've had enough of singing, and it's almost like like... you get so frustrated that you (laughs) don't want to put in the effort into your magic, and because of that, that alone, alone, 
the firebolt, firebolt that you released the second time, second time is barely more barely than more a than small than dart, dart, like the kind like that Murren throws, except it's made of flame, and it hits the kobold as it's rushing, and it turns and screeches out at you a, a, a slew of words that you just don't understand, because you don't speak draconic. The rest of you um, understand, and it wasn't pleasant. Nonsense, my mother is a saint. I shall inspire, uh, Murren. Smash the, uh, the cultist in the face a bit harder. Murren. <laughs> I'm going to hit this one on the knocker. Mace, it hits. Seven bludgeoning. You smash him off the face with uh, Mace, and he is revealed to be a dragonborn. dragonborn. Oh. And he kind of just hisses in the face. Is he still standing? As the mask falls away. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. fine. I mean, he's not I... fine. He's really injured, but yes. He's, <laughs> he's totally fine. <laughs> Took it like a chap. Um, I'm fine I... to like, hiss it in your face, and okay, the um... will eat your bones. And all those of the ones you love. Gonna hit him with the unarmed strike as a bonus action. Your life means nothing. Uh, I will soon I will be by her, by her side. side. That hits. Damage is a seven again. Jesus fuck. He's like, I will so soon be by her side. You bring back one giant fucking ham sized fist. Yeah. You smash it into the side of his skull and he drops like a sack of potatoes. He is out for the count. This kobold uh, over so here is still in play. Uh, the rest. Uh, the rest oh, oh, sorry. Um, Yeah. And then uh, can I just quickly um, say to Lenon, which way next? Um, yep. She sort of gestures. She's just like, Tries to gesture, tries like, to gesture. keep your voice down, and points Toys, across uh, the cross. marketplace, yeah. past the cart, uh, and in the same direction that the kobold is currently fleeing. Toby, uh, it is your turn. Okay. I guess what would usually be his better judgment, he's just gunning for that uh, guy over there. Which uh, guy? The, the last kobold that you were fighting, or someone else? No, he's going for the cultists. Okay. 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 So, so, just to... Now, What's on the maps to indicate that there are groups of people? Okay, I feel like he would in, start tunneling, tunnel visioning at this point. I say this because each one of those tokens represents three to four people. So there is a lot of people in this marketplace, which is why they haven't why they paid have much attention to you, because there's a lot going on. You can still do that if you want to, but I just want you to be aware that that is a thing. Yeah, no, he's yeah, no. not in his right mind. He's making poor decisions. So are uh, you using Chill Touch or Eldritch Blast? Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Uh, that does not hit anything. <laughs> so you're really like, you're really like, <laughs> I assure you. So you guys see Toby turn from the group that you've just finished taking care of and start firing wildly into uh, groups of nearby cultists. Apparently not, not hitting, hitting anything, anything, but it does appear to draw a bit more attention on you guys. And it is the kobold's turn, and he and is going to rush up onto the cart. He just turns and looks at you and screams, Rise, brothers! Rise! Rise! Let's see uh, how persuasive he is. As he leaps up onto this cart and he shouts this towards the nearest group of people, you get a few, yeah, a few of the kobolds that are passing near the cart sort of stop and look up at him and go, Yeah! <laughs> And they sort of just cheer. They're looking directly at him, ignoring where he's pointing. And they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah rise, rise. Oh. Cultists pay absolutely no attention to him at all. So for now, I'm going to say initiative is drop. Toby is wildly Toby. firing magic into groups of cultists. There appear to be no immediate threats and no one is currently paying a huge amount of attention to you, though this wildly firing magic uh, is just, just barely, barely missing people. is starting, starting to, to garner, garner, garner attention. attention. Do any of you do anything about? <laughs> I I say to Lenore, just like fucking ignoring the fact that Toby is shooting magic at people that are I ignoring. I think we should move. Well, I currently holding my face hurts. Okay, okay. Uh, I am uh, going, going to um, scroll roll athletics to try and tackle Toby and stop him from doing <laughs> doing what he's fucking doing. The only one who has any sense. Uh, you can uh, try and contest, try and contest that, if, contest you that you if you want. No, he's not paying attention. Yeah, he's like, um, okay, so, so Scraw just rushes over and wraps his huge long arms around Toby and bodily picks him up and goes, nope, we're going, and we're going now. Everybody, let's get out of here. Um, Toby is struggling. Because but... kind of, now he's <laughs> dealing with two of his least favorite things and the second being touching. What, what do you guys want to do? Are you like, um, sort of ready to go? Yeah, I said to... No, no. I think we should move. Yes, you did. Everybody roll a group stealth check. Are you going to grab the kid again, Are you again? Grab the kid again? 
Um, yep, I'll hang back and just wait until most of them pass, and then I'll. Sure. I think I tripped over a kid. Oh, oh we're like, leaving, and you just start he's... hopping forward. And... <laughs> he's hidden um, behind yeah. a mask. You are stealthily struggling. <laughs> That's what's happening there. Is that Toby is like he's suddenly aware of his surroundings and. Scraw is like holding on to him. Toby and goes. Toby goes from. Get off me! Get off me! And, gonna... then he's like, oh. and then he's like, "Oh my God, somebody is holding me!" And he yeah. kind of just iron boards up, <laughs> and he's just like, "Oh God, what's going on? What do we do?" And he's just frozen, and that's why he's so stealthy. Let's go with that. <laughs> the, 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 children the children and the wounded gnome rolled higher than a uh, back boss. Uh, I think they are most dangerous. His tracks. The fire rolled higher than me. Luckily. The rest of you are cautious enough that you do not attract attention. Uh, Scraw, despite carrying Toby, managing to make a pretty good, decent job of somehow being inconspicuous. You guys make it out of the, the market marketplace, and, and Scraw puts Toby down. He, he puts him down while still firmly holding him. He says, is there going to be any more of this? Save it save for it. when we're in danger. Oh, but it's good. great. Please let go. Do, do save it. Please let go. But just, just let go. Stop touching me. He's like, he, he's like, <laughs> very well. Very and well. then he like puts his hand on your and head on your and head ruffles and your head back and forwards between your horns. Uh, no, no, stop. You can, you can roll a deck save if you wish. Yeah. Very well. Very well. Touch. Ruffle, ruffle, ruffle. I feel like oh, uh-huh. I'm like uh-huh. flown away <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Your head is basically head is just basically... sold around as he like <sighs> ruffles your hair between your horns and his hand just keeps hitting the side of your horns so your head goes... <laughs> And I will just catch anyway, it. It's anyway. lovely to see beautiful new friendships forming. I shoot Doomsinger the worst scowl ever. ever. If looks the biggest could kill. Biggest look you can muster. If looks could kill, Doomsinger would be dead. Leading you forward, Lanan sort of turns around and says, We must, must try to not draw attention. Not draw we cannot it. afford to. And as she's and as sort she's of so... giving you this, you as a group, this lecture, you uh, guys you see guys... a group of. Three, three uh, villagers uh, villages. running past. Uh, running past. So you're at a crossroads, and you and see these see villagers come out of uh, the come out of the road, running horizontally across from. They are running. They are trying to hold on to their worldly possessions, but they are being pursued by a cultists. pair of cultists and, and and what appears to be a large lizard large. of some kind. I'm beginning to dislike this place somewhat. That's probably due to the sheer amount of enemies we're encountering. Quite a lot of them. Yes. Very, very droll. Very, very, very observant, sir. You can roll a nature check to determine whether or not you know what it is, if you like. What you notice is this is what's known as a... It's essentially a dragon without wings, but it is a small hall hmm. size. Uh, heavily pursuing heavily. these people who are fleeing for their lives. What are you guys doing? Are you going to... Like, they don't notice you? Because you guys are sneaking along pretty well, but again, these people run past screaming for their lives, uh, and they are being but they're just down kind of by opposite by... directions. Yeah. Well, you're heading forward towards this crossroads. They run past the crossroads. Lenan sort of stops because she doesn't want to get involved. Uh, she's obviously trying to keep her family safe, but they've just passed. I just say to the group that looks like a Drake up ahead. Well, Deacon, everyone can see them. So, so okay. we're, we're talking, this is like 15, 20 feet in front of you guys as this group charges past. charges past. You can either choose to interact, to like intervene, or you can ignore them and let them make their own way. Can I get a good look at this creature? Like, really, really inspect it as it goes past? I just want to see, look, you know, just look yeah. at it. But yeah, guys, but yeah, are you guys, intervening are you... and saving these people, or are you leaving them to their fate? Toby's kind of shell shocked at the moment. <laughs> intervening. Okay, so Mix is going to intervene one way or the other. Is uh, everybody is going to intervene, everybody... or are they just going to leave Mix to sort it? Toby is just going to go with them. Scroll definitely would jump in because Scroll is just always looking for a fight. Large base and the potential. I'm going to stay where I am. I think, but I might approach it closely as well. Well, if everyone's getting involved, I will hang back, but try and keep it in case I can jump in. So the so cultists the... and the drake are drake running are... this way towards the commoners. The townsfolk, townsfolk, you guys are coming from this direction. Go ahead and roll the again. again. Who, me? Everyone. Everyone. All of us. Everybody. Less good. Myrn. 
Mm -hmm. You rush to the forefront as you see this group charging after the townsfolk. I still carry the child. You are still carrying a child, yes. Oh god. Shit. Where Father is... Father and siblings are behind you. Oh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. I drop the child. Yep. And then I'll step forward a little bit. And then I shout in Draconic. I kind of uh, hold my mace up and I shout, uh -huh. For Tiamat! Go ahead, roll a deception check with disadvantage. They look confused. The drake does not in any way stop. It continues its charge. But the cultists are given pause. Doomsinger, you didn't understand a word of what he just said. So you just saw him run out to the road and shout something growly and dragon-like uh, and wave his mace at them. I will shout all of the grey towers. I shall cast Thunderweave. So the one that the gets, one thrown, that gets back, thrown back, you see him thrown into a nearby tree and he hits it hard and his neck kind of falls in an unnatural way as his body slumps to the ground. The one to your left reels slightly but then comes back and draws both swords to try and attack you. My bonus, I am just going to shout a, a death chant inspiringly towards the, the bugbear um, and rouse him with my passion and speech and my general charging fightiness which I know he favours by sure. watching him so far. Toby, you're up. Uh, he's uh, gonna yeah. cast Chill cast Touch on the Drake. Also <laughs> another cultist wearing the same lizardy mask. Yeah, he's he's a little bit more in his right mind now, so he's going for what he perceives as the bigger yep. threat. Yep. The bigger <laughs> threat. Sure. So you summon the uh, skeletal hand and it swipes, swipes at the Drake, Drake who blinks, blinks and uh, seems unfazed as phased. it continues its charge forward. Roar is going to run over to... Marin's side, side, and swinging his glaive into his hands, he uh, extends he it to the very tip of its reach, brings his arms, arms up, up over up. his head, and swings down the longest arc you've ever seen anybody wielding a weapon. Uh, and he slams it down into the skull of the drake. And the drake does react. It screeches and roars in agony as it continues its charge, but it seems a bit slowed. It's taken several attacks you guys now, and it's Badly wounded Badly. as it continues its charge forward. Our bot. Hmm. Definitely doesn't seem like the most intelligent creature. So, well, I got my three. I going to put my fingers to my temple, clear my thought, and visualize a bell, and I will pull the dead on it. So you guys see this creature suddenly lashing its head around, as though it's trying to locate the source of a sound, and its and screeching turns into roars, and its roars become gargled, gargled. and pained as it as starts it slamming its head into the ground over and over and over again, as it as bludgeons itself into unconsciousness. My bonus action I just took, not very the kids and the kids. father are just going to hang back father with Lanan, who back. is also Hank. Mix. Mix. I'm going to use my crossbow to attack. Um... Only next to the Doom Singer. Yeah. The only one. The, the others are just the innocent others. townsfolk. Oh, sorry, I got really confused. Then yes. Kill everything. <laughs> Are you attacking to kill or to wound? No patience um, to kill. I love how the I love entire how way through the town, you've been like, capture them, capture them. Capture the one them. time you actually have the chance to catch someone, you're like, no, straight through the eyeball. That's what happens. Cultist isn't going to tell us anything. No one's going to face anyway. You shoot the cultist uh, and the arrow kisses its skull and he drops to the ground dead. As this happens, Lenan turns and shouts to the townsfolk that are fleeing. She's like, wait, wait, travel with us, safety in numbers. They turn around, they're like, what? Because up until just a moment ago, there were two cultists and a drake chasing them. They turn around and they see and dead drake dead and the dead drake. cultists and they surprise that a stagger back. <laughs> These uh, are a group of Fabolgs who are sort of like think trolls, trolls oh. but if trolls were nice, very soft, soft foresty creatures, kind of almost like ogre-like wolves. Uh, yeah. They kind of just bumble over and they're like, "Oh, thank you, friends. Thank you. Come, we must oh. to the keep." And he points slowly behind him and just up. And you follow the direction follow the that direction. he's pointing and you see that there is a large hill, large. not that far from where you are now, which has a top, its land, a large keep. You do see the occasional kobold or you see figures in the distance running around that area, but not nearly as many as you've seen pouring through the town and smashing through the houses. It says, come to the keep. Oh. And you notice that the entire time you've been oh, running through the town, there's been a bell that has been ringing. And there's been more than one bell, but the main source of this bell does appear to be the keep and it is doing its best to usher in the townsfolk uh, to safety to let them know that the keep is safe 
So Lenon no, from there just turns around and picks up one of the gnome uh, numerous children, and she turns and to she you turns again, Marin, and says, "Are you still able?" Yes. So you hoist up the dwarven girl, and uh, the rest of you carry on. Lenan just starts Lenan making just pace stopped. for Fabolg's turn, and they all start walking at a, a decent pace towards the keep. One of the Fabolgs, <laughs> his arm, gets the, the gnomish father and sort of father. helps him to overcome his limps. Uh, so you're, you're making a slightly quicker pace than you, you were before now. Before uh, we leave, am I okay to uh, about? I'd like to just um, head over to the court, and since it's already smashed its head in the ground a few times, and had its head smashed in by a glaze, since it must be a little loose by now, see if I can get a couple of fangs out of its mouth. Uh, see, in the meantime, uh, what is the marching order? Because are you going to wait around for, are you going to do this while there are people still around, or are you going to wait for them to leave and then catch up? I want to look at one of the cultist corpses to see if I can find any information on their person at all. You roll an investigation roll. check. Uh, oh, that roll nature. I'd like to pluck a scale from the drag, please. Go ahead and roll an investigation. Never mind. <laughs> um, you find the mask that the cultist is wearing, and uh, you don't find any don't other... Find any other- the information on the body of the corpse? I keep the mask. I start away for now. Maybe you can learn more about it later. Avak, you sort of start rifling through the mouth of the creature, but basically it's done so damage much damage to, it. to itself, smashing its face into the ground, that all the fangs you can find are just smashed there, cracked. Looks like they weren't particularly sturdy in this specimen. Mm. Perhaps not worth, worth it. Not worth it. Worth you, you manage to find a loose scale, but the majority, majority of these are fixed fairly firmly and would require a decent amount of finesse to recover. Yes, to recover. But That's right. I you just do find the one. That is, you find a sufficiently loose scale to recover it. It's, it's quite large. I'd say it's a, about twice the size of a two-piece. Not the largest scale on the chip, but a large scale as scales go. What's the marching yep, order the around marching. your growing group of folk? I'm assuming I'm around the back as I was picking dragon okay. scales. I just mean before you guys proceed, you... so the nun is <clears throat> leading the way still. Although she's actually hanging back more now that there are more people and she's carrying one of her children. Uh, Scraw's going to go ahead and walk with whoever's leading. You guys are currently being led by a group of three for bolds, but they are lumbering and they're doing their best to take a quick pace towards the keep. And you find yourselves find very yourself. shortly at the at base the... of the hill where the keep Dark. You're, uh, you're yes. seeing an increasingly large gathering of cultists and co- kobolds amassing in the area around this keep. However, they haven't really created a refined line yet, so it's still possible for you guys to get through. As you make your way up the hill, are interrupted, are interrupted by a by group a, a... of cultists with a well-armored well, guard. guard. And they're kind of actually just wandering towards a group of kobolds that are starting to form a line to try and hedge in and prevent access to the keep when they catch sight of you. Um, And obviously you've got quite a large group of townsfolk with you now, so they Um, are doing their best to just get in the way. How do you guys want to approach us? Or are you just going to try and cut them down? I think cutting them down is probably going to be the best bet because otherwise they're just going to keep getting in the way. I'm kind of regretting not stealing a disguise from one of the no longer existing cultists so that we could have passed through and conversed with them. Did you say this is an elf stood at the back? Is that an elf stood at the back? No, he's just a guy. No. He's also wearing a mask, but he's well armoured compared to the other ones. So unless you guys are going to do otherwise, you guys are going to attack you. So unless you can think of a way to talk your way out of this, roll initiative. Oh, damn it. Now do we kill them all, or...? Broad just charts the person and goes, I've got the word, fiend! And he whips his glaive around and just attacks the first cultist the first on the right. Because right. given the arc of his weapon, that makes sense. So yep. with that so one swing, he just drops that cultist. Arabah, Arabah. Quick flick of the wrist, and a chill touch on that guy. So you try to summon, try to the, summon. the skeletal hand that has served you so well thus far, but about a long hour or so hour of or so. charging across this city and <laughs> city and <laughs> many a foe many of has drained you of your energy. And temporarily you lose focus and you're unable to summon your attack. Murren. Dropping the kid. We'll move over here. Take out. I've got to try. I'm going to attack this dude with mace. Yeah, so you run over with your mace and you swing at the cultist who dodges deftly. Dodges deftly. You do a jet lee. You, you swing your mace to one side. He turns to look at it. You stick your fist in his face. And as he turns back, you just slam it forwards into the side of his face. Oof. Um, that's for six and... damage. Nice. Yeah, so he reels from the. Like, ah, ah, 
Mm. And as that is all as that you is would understand, it. and he basically just swore at you. Uh, Nix. I am going to my crossbow again. So he takes the so arrow, and it actually smashes through his mask and leaves a large gash across the side of his face. You see that this guy is a half orc. But... Half orc, half like it, there's something goblinoid in his features. So his lower jaw is much more prominent than normal. His face is much gnarlier than in the standard half orc. He looks much less soft featured, as most half orcs, half -orcs tend to orcs. look a little bit softer than a standard orc. He actually looks gnarlier than a regular orc, as his face is just very brutally crunched up. His fangs are much more pronounced, and, and this now, now quite significant gash yeah. across his face, leaving him with a quite, quite terrifying scary. visage. Lenan shields her child's eyes from the horror. Uh, this is, is going to swing around over here and try right. to attack Act. the townsfolk. And he, he just and cuts he down one down of one the Furbolg. Okay, so he doesn't kill the doesn't townsfolk kill. that he attacks, but he does Act. heavily wound him. And he drop, uh, it drops to its knees and just goes, <sighs> and he looks up at Scrawl and says, oh. please. Help! Help! Toby. Yeah, well, he was going to go for the guard, but instead I'm going to rain retribution down on that asshole. <laughs> He's going to chill touch um, the cool cultist now. that just attacks the town folk. So you summon a skeletal hand as skeletal he's hand like slashing down at this Faborg. He comes back in for the second strike. As he does so, the skeletal hand rusts down on his arm and he rears back suddenly, rears unable back to land the up. blow. And he cries out in pain but is still standing, uh, although he's looking extremely rough at this point, as he is also the one that took a smack in the face from Murren. He's so looking very unsteady on his feet. Very un Doom Singer. Wander over here and go smoke on the water, fire in your face. Shoot firebolt at the cultist that hit the peasant as well. You shoot uh, a, a firebolt and it actually impacts with the dragon like mask dragon -like that the creature is wearing. wearing. And you find, find that it's extremely flammable as he screeches and grabs at his grabs face his trying face to remove the mask. His hair is hair caught on is fire caught. as he falls to the ground Grab trying to put himself out and falls uh, into unconsciousness from the pain. This is now a very, a very badly scarred, scarred. half-elf. You get the impression get that this guy is half-elf, half-dragonborn. He's got a lot of scales lot across his face anyway so the scarring is just kind of mottled and mutilate flesh of his face now uh, now he's in front of Marin's turn now he's going to try and take a pop at Marin. Mm -hmm. Marin, uh, you Marin, take you... four points of mm -hmm. damage as he slashes okay. you up with his scimitar Heathen. then it is these guys these and guys. This commoner is going to rush over, rush here, over here, and he's going to kick the cultist who's on the ground. The rest of them are too afraid to do anything. To do anything. Scrawl's turn. Scrawl's he, turn. he is going to attack the guard, attack who has thus far done nothing. He was not rolled into initiative, because I'm fantastic game. <laughs> um, no, you know what? Seeing nope, as that was the last round, the guard he is going to throw a throw spear us. just into the crowd of commoners. Com he grievously wounds two more of the people in the group. And now it is Scrawl's turn. And Scrawl is Scroll going is to moving. furiously flash back. So Scrawl reacts badly to badly. the guard throwing a spear at a group of children and for Bolg and um, slashes and him heavily in the face with a glaive. Guard, guard reels, reels from the blow and is looking extremely rough as blood pours down the right side of his face. Are back. Looking, still looking rather confused at my fingers, the way that spell didn't go off. I'm going to wriggle my wrist and try it again. Chill Who are you attacking? This one poor sod. And you see this bloke right in the centre right. of the group. I'll finish off that cultist, sure, he's definitely down. No, the guard, sorry, not why it's a cultist, the guard. So as the guard is, guard is reeling from the blow of Scrawl's glaive, you summon a skeletal be hand behind him, which rushes up into his skull, and as he <laughs> stags <laughs> backwards, uh, the hand and passes through his skull, and he collapses onto the ground. I'm Dead, dead. I'm just going to finish this guy off. The mace. Yeah, so you bring around and smash him with your mace. He drops to the stone. Was that the, um, the half orc? That was the that half orc the... with the All right. fucked up face. As he falls, I, I say in orcish, follow the light, brother. That is the end of the combat. Uh, the Fabolg, who is badly Fibolg wounded, is like badly kicking wounded. the uh, cultist, occasionally who occasionally groans, but is not conscious. And uh, the, another Fabolg comes over and puts his hand on his shoulder and says, Enough, brother. Enough, brother. We should 
He just looks around at you and says, we should take this one. Just gonna shrug. At this point, uh, Lenon just turns and says, do as you will. But we must hurry before the gates are closed. And she starts and... rushing with her family ahead um, to try and right, get to yeah. the keep's gates before I it becomes impossible wait. to do so. I will and call her back using wait in my best loud voice. You can try uh, and persuade her. But with disadvantage, because she is fearing for her family's life. We were protecting her family's life. But she is determined to get them inside that key. Your performance, was that? Or persuasion? Nope, just persuasion. Yeah, she's not stopping. What are you guys doing? With, uh, I pick up the follow behind. The kid's gone with her and her... The, oh, okay. The kids and her husband, like, they all just rushed ahead. Um, the Furbolgs as well? The Furbolgs, look at you guys, one of them is trying to hoist the body of the cultist who's much larger than he is, as the cultist, that is. Um, uh, and he, he's like, we, we, should take, we should take him inside to the oh, keep. That's a good idea. Oh, we'll know what to do. I'll um, I'll pick up the cultist. He's unconscious. Sure. Yes, right, he's, okay. he's very, very unconscious. This is the one that's <laughs> okay. been burned and fucked up by uh, Doom Singer's fireballs. Okay. What are the rest of you guys doing? The Fabolgs are kind of happy that you've picked up this guy. Just start rushing towards the keep as well. I'm kind of going to bounce Friends. behind the peasants and the children because I have a bad feeling about this. Toby hangs back as as well for all of the townsfolk to go first. Mix. I want to know what they're going to do with the cultist. Well, that Murrin's the one that picked him up. He's, he just said, bring him to the keep. With, and he said, Tarball will Tarball know what to do. Okay, so let's go to the keep. Can I ask them? Um, what? Are you guys Tarball? are all rushing. There's still a lot of chaos going on. Like, they're okay. trying to rush to the keep entrance Who? before the other cultists or kobolds prevent it being possible. He just says, come, come. You will see, as he's sort of out of breath trying to run. The townsfolk all um, make it quite safely to the gate of the keep, which is, you see all along the keep tower, there are rows of guards who are firing down arrows and kobolds <laughs> as, they, as, as often as they can, essentially, at the kobolds that, and if anyone that gets within range um, along the enemy lines, they are trying to fire at. However, they are keeping the road relatively clear. They're preventing people from getting too close to it so that anybody rushing up the road can reach the keep safely. Townsfolk get to the gate and you see that as they obviously rushed ahead of all of you, the gate is open. They rush inside. It's a big, heavy, heavy oak door type thing. And uh, they rush through. As you guys approach, what do you do? Well, I, as I was heading like quite close behind them, can I see what What's in there? Ran it after him. is not wide open. So if you've got two doors two that doors close that... by being opposite each other, one of them is cracked open. So realistically, you can't see through there unless you're basically ready to go in. You can try and peek try through. through. Um, I'm going to head oh, straight I would down. like to have I've a peek the... through. Yeah, I mean, Murren can still yeah. rush through. If, whether, yeah, uh... I've got the cultist on my shoulder. Stealth up then and peek around the door. I just want to... Head around and see what I can see with them. Roll your perception. Nix, Toby, what are you guys doing? Toby pauses before he enters the keep just to see if there's anyone coming behind them, enemy or other townspeople. I'm also going to be somewhat cautious. Nix just um, kind of I'm going to follow up the, behind the Doomfinger. Your friends brush past you. Uh, or rather, your travelling compatriots brush past you, Doomfinger, as you see that... You can see that there is a group of guards kind of creating a perimeter around the entrance but you don't see any of the people that just passed through the door because they kind of moved in and then moved i don't like the looks of this guys i don't trust this face priest what think you lauren's already gone ah uh, well that was he just shit. brushed right past you he's just like he's like come on I've got a, like he he's followed the cult he followed the townsfolk straight through. He's carrying a dead an unconscious cultist on his back. Lizard boy, what do you think of this particular situation? Well, our kobolds outside, and we don't know what's inside. But what's inside are people who didn't try to kill us. So logic dictates inside maybe best. Well, I'd also say we've just been met on the road by an armored guard and some cultists, and I rather think that uh, if there was a sizable army of any good sort in here, they'd rather be out protecting the walls. So, um, Toby, you do not see any enemies struggling up the roads. You, you don't see any townsfolk on the road behind you, though you're sure there are more in the town, but there's none that you can see. You do see people, so you do see more cultists and kobolds closing in towards the road from either side, as they are closing closer and closer to prevent further access to the keep. Right, he goes in. He just goes in, disregards the two outside standing there going, hmm, this is very, very suspicious. They can do whatever the fuck they want as far as he's concerned. I'm just going to follow him in. You guys are both outside, 
for the moment. You make your way into the keep grounds after Murren has gone through with a uh, an unconscious cultist on his shoulders, and you see that there is a ring of guards creating a blockade between the gate and the rest of the keep. The townsfolk that you have helped reach this point thus far are standing in front of the gate guards and you can see they're having a conversation and one by one they're letting them through they're not sort of slowing them down in any way but you can see that they're giving them a once over for weapons or anything dangerous and the like and then as the family comes through they sort of usher them in in certain directions what do you guys do once you've made it through the doors are we allowed to go further in or do we have to drop our weapons no one has said anything to you thus far there is a perimeter i'd say it's about 15 20 foot radius around the gate just a a wall of guards they do have crossbows and they are pointing them at you but not in a hostile way it's prepared rather than they're not aimed directly at you they're aimed at you but down as though they were ready to bring it to uh, readiness to fire if you were to show aggression also Toby wants to follow Morin because he wants to know what's going to happen to that cultist so Morin just starts wandering over towards the guards a few of them sort of see that he's carrying someone and you sort of see them look a bit suspicious and then as he gets closer they see that you're all variously armed and are, are you approaching as well mix yes following Murren and one of the guards looks over and goes uh, uh, ca- captain captain and this is uh, an orcish gentleman and he's <laughs> shouting over his shoulder like what the fuck as you guys are approaching the guards the there is a break in the line briefly as a large stout dwarf in red armor comes uh, through the crowd and goes, <clears throat> what's all this what's, what, what's going on here what are, you, what are you bringing here? Uh, he's looking at her and Murren's just like, um, they suggested we would bring the the one of these guys to Talbor. I mean, this is one of the guys that was attacking outside. He's like, right, so you just happened to waltz in and uh, <laughs> one of the people attacking out. Right, that 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 how this happened? I wouldn't say looks waltz. At two of you. <laughs> I'd say more like... He looks at you, Toby, and you look... You haven't got a scratch on you, right? No, I haven't taken any damage. Yeah. So he looks at Toby, he's like, certainly looks like you're waltzing here to me. And he looks at Mix and he says, you maybe, I could think, maybe you've been in a bit of a scuff, but not sure I'm buying this. Where are you from? What brings you to town? We came in on... From here? Toby's like, we came in on a cat on a caravan and saw the town was being attacked before we even entered the town. Oh, no caravan's coming through here now. Well, no, it's because it's stopped outside the town. Bring them into the... Right, right, okay. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. Uh, What do you know about Tarbor? And Moran's just like, um, one of the, uh, he points to the furbogs who are sort of being away. It's like, one of the, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. uh, as you're having this conversation at this point, Doomsinger and Abak slip in behind you. So, Abak, you just stroll in. You've decided it's the logical thing to do. Mm-hmm. I shall saunter in behind as I do. As you guys wander into the keep, you see that there's a 15, 20 foot perimeter of guards creating a ring. Murren, Mix, and Toby are deep in conversation with these guards. And you see that they are talking specifically with a large dwarf wearing red armor who's kind of questioning them. And he looks, he looks very focused on them right now. How far away from them are we? Five foot or so. Can I make a very pointed clear my throat cough to get some attention? Absolutely. As you do this... <clears throat> that's it, that's the noise. You see the guards, and all these guards have crossbows. And the crossbow, crossbows are not at attention. Um, they are sort of pointed down, um, although they are trained on the door. And as you make this coffee noise, the dwarf looks up and goes, What the bloody hell's this? And he looks at the guards next to him pointedly, who raise their, uh, their crossbows. Sorry, stranger. But you're not coming in here dressed like that. No one goes through without being checked. Do not vouch for the word of a priest. I think you'll find that my companion Murren knows me well enough to know that I can be trusted. Like it or not, friend, our town is under attack. I can't take anybody's word for nothing. As far as I'm concerned, you're all strangers here. You may well have a cultist, but for all I know, this is just another trap. I'm not willing to risk the lives that we have saved today on the word of some priest who claims to have who knows what. May I speak to you alone? No, you bloody well can't, you upright little shit. Who do you think you are? Merely a traveller wishing to discuss uh, my business with, obviously, the gentleman in charge. I rather thought that's what you wanted. You may reveal yourself now, or you may be leaving. Those are your options. And as he's saying this, you see some figures is walking over towards him from the other side of the line of guards. I would rather reveal my self. I would rather discuss in private. My reasons are understandable once you taught me. You're more than welcome to bring some guards in with you if you distrust my word. Look, 
I don't have time for this. Just make your decision. Or and as uh, he's sort of reinforcing the statement once again, you hear, hey, 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 hey. Escobar, 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 Escobar. And you see a large half orc, half dragonborn step up behind him and pass him on the says, Escobar, this this man here is the greatest greatest Lewis you've ever seen. I've I've, I've been travelling with this man for weeks. If it wasn't for this man, me and my buddies, we wouldn't have saved Saved all those people we saved. We saved. Look, you know how many. And Escobar's looking at him like, ah. You know, you you know how many people we brought here. How many? Ah. Come on. How how, how, how many how did many we did... save today? Twenty. Twenty. Thirty. 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 Five hundred. I don't know. It was a lot. Point being, this man's with, man's me, with me and my buddies, and he's okay. He's alright. He just he just likes his mask. And believe me. And believe he, Plays the finest, finest banjos banjo. ever. I oh, thank you for your kind words. words. And he just looks up. Sorry, about he, he so he only plays one banjo now. It's just there's only one, but it's still good. <laughs> still good. Behind him, you see a large gnome who is sporting a giant bushy beard and has this brutal grizzly scar across oh, his chest. Right. And he goes, "Hey, hey, hey, hey. that's a duck. Yeah, he's with us as well." This is what I'm good. It's fine. It's fine. Just just let them through. And as you, as you... see that they're gesturing, you see that these guys are really badly fucking injured. Like the half orc, half dragonborn has literally lost half his arm and has been really carefully, carefully bandaged, bandaged, but has obviously lost a lot of blood tonight. They are all suffering and there's only like um, I'd say five I'd say or six five of or them six. in this group. Uh, they are all severely beaten. They've taken a real rough ride tonight. Nonetheless, it's it's been made very clear that these guys have done extraordinary work in saving the townsfolk. And Escobar sort of just looks at them and says, All right, look, all right, look. you guys have done the town a great, town service, a great service. And I cannot, I cannot forget, forget that, that. that this night is not, not over yet. I'll be watching you. I should ensure One end, that's fine. fine. I should we'll have a guard on you at all times. That is fine. And, and if it comes to it, you'll be ready when we, ready call. When we call. We need well, all hands on deck. Well, I very much intend to play my part, that is why I'm here. I'd say, do you not want someone to tend to those men? They look like they're important. This I believe I could have them. But at least I could have a doctor. Oh, we have our medics. Oh, we have clerics and medics. medics. But more medical assistance is always appreciated in times of dying. Please. Please. As I say, come through. Tarball will Tarball want to meet you. And he turns to Martin and says, I'm sorry I don't. Sorry I don't. And that's all we had time for this week. Thank you for listening, and hopefully you can join us next time. New episodes will be released each Sunday for the foreseeable future, so don't forget to subscribe to our RSS feed, or on iTunes, or through your favoured podcasting service. The song that you heard at the beginning of this episode was Extravaganza by TRG Banks, and you can find this on Bandcamp at trgbanks.bandcamp.com. And the song that you are now hearing is While You Are Here by Ending Satellites.